Doctor, we have certainly had four hectic weeks. We sure have. I've been in the Senate a very short time, but everything up here has been moving fast since I've been here, and I don't think that uh, it could be more hectic than it has been this week particularly. Yes. Uh, you recall it's been a little over four weeks when we had our first meetings, when this iniquitous civil rights bill came over from the House of Representatives. Uh, we were a rather pathetic group. Uh, Eighteen of us meeting, it seemed that they were likely to just get this bill up before the Senate and let us debate it a few days and put cloture on us and pass it and send it to the White House. This simple uh, right to vote bill turned out to be quite a monster, didn't it? No, sir, there's never been anything like it in all the history of American legislation. It's uh, conveyed powers that are completely strange to the American system. But uh, with the fight that we have made on it, we have been were able to get enough of our colleagues in the Senate to go along with us in extracting most of the poison from the bill, but there's already enough there's left. There's still plenty left. Enough, and left I want enough to left congratulate you, Dick. You know, when they took this bill up, we got 18 votes. Uh, we had a high water mark of 52 votes when we struck that part three. And the people of this country traveled under the assumption that it was a harmless right to vote bill until you made your first speech on July the 2nd. And it was pretty widely covered by the newspapers throughout the country, the press, the radio, and television. And for the first time, people all over America learned what a monstrous bill that was. And I am quite confident that your first speech was the turning point in this trend that started alerting the people north, south, east, well, and west that this was far more than just a mild, moderate little voting bill. Well, you're certainly generous to say that, uh, Herman. I did have to lay it on the line in that speech and make a meaner speech than I would like to have made because we had to get through that curtain of silence and deception about the bill to really get it before the country. But I'm certainly not entitled to all the credit. Uh, you have performed uh, magnificently, not only in your splendid speeches on the floor, but in your very helpful advice in the conferences that well, we've you're had. you're very kind to say that, but as quarterback <laughs> of the team, of course, you've carried the major share of the load, and all of us have done our part as best we knew quarterback how. Quarterback can't move unless he's got the linemen and the blockers. Well, uh, your parliamentary skill and uh, perseverance in this thing has been a very great uh, contribution to the victories that we've won. Now we have won three great victories. First, we've taken out that part to authorize the president to use troops, or anyone he authorizes to use troops to carry out whatever whim or caprice the attorney general wanted to do. Second, we've taken out that pernicious part three that would authorize the attorney general of the United States to bring a suit in the name of the United States against anyone he saw fit for any conceivable phase of human rights. That, of course, was the greatest victory of all. Third, we've had our most recent victory of authorizing people being tried for criminal contempt, which is a crime, to have a jury trial. But we haven't by any means finished with this monster. Oh. It's still about as bad as you can think. Yes, there's still some very dangerous speeches, but we undoubtedly have cured the three worst vices in the bill, though it's still a very bad piece of legislation, and we'll continue to fight it. I do want to say that the action of the Senate on these three propositions has certainly reinforced my faith in the legislative branch of the government. When this bill came over... There was a universal feeling that the Senate would pass it expeditiously. This bill is a political football. The extreme liberals in both parties have used it to, uh, as a dog's tail wags a dog to control the, the votes in both parties. And uh, it's a great tribute to the independence and the courage of the members of the Senate, particularly those on the Republican side who voted with us, that they have stood so firmly for the constitutional government and have refused to be sold on the many very vicious attacks that have been made on the Southern people without any confirmation or evidence. I think one thing we ought to mention, too, 
Vic, is the stalwart uh, people on the Republican side of the aisle that would not take dictation and vote just for the sake of political expediency, that they would stand up and conduct themselves as United States senators trying to support the Constitution of the United States. That did much to restore my faith in in the constitutional government and in the Senate. I've always been proud of the Senate, but never prouder than I have been over the past three weeks. I certainly share your view in that. Now, the most pernicious part, it seems to me, that remains in this bill is that the Attorney General is authorized in the name of the United States government to go into court and represent private litigants, with or without their consent, to enforce voting rights. Now, that's a, a strange well, we, we're deviation. Well, we're not with that yet. That's a strange deviation from our Anglo-Saxon jurisprudence as we've known it to the present time. Now, if the Attorney General can represent folks with or without their consent in the name of the United States, at the taxpayer's expense, why should they limit it to just voting rights? They ought to include the well, right they tried to not to limit it in, to any, any, any right on earth in that part three, but uh, we finally got that out. But, of course, it is an absurd proposition, a monstrous proposition, and we will certainly strive vigorously to see that none of these actions are filed without the written request of the uh, party supposed to be agreed. And there's a great deal about that commission. Oh, that's, it's, got, it's, to be, well, that's got to be tightened up. One of the things they're authorizing to do is use volunteers. Well, I'm sure, Herman, that uh, the great support that we've received from our people back home has been to you, as it has been to me, a constant wellspring from which I have renewed my strength. I agree with you fully. Sometimes when you feel that the whole world is against you, and you see your Georgia people and they tell you how proud they are of the fight that you're making and telegrams and letters that you're receiving from home, it certainly renews the confidence that you have in the American people and in constitutional government. I want to congratulate you again, uh, Dick, on the magnificent fight.